Are we on? Are we on? You're on, Mr. President. Our deflection mission has failed. The asteroid is still headed for Earth, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. So this is it. If life does go on, it will not go on for all of us. Recriminations at this point are make no sense whatsoever, but still, I want to emphasize that no blame need be heaped on NASA nor on any of the other people who were involved in the Herculean effort to try to stop this catastrophe from taking place. The fact of the matter is, since we detected this asteroid a mere three and a half weeks ago, most experts concluded that it was almost impossible to stop it. Sadly, those experts were right. The effect of this impact is going to be, well, disastrous. It will hit roughly 100 miles off the coast of the United States, somewhere in the vicinity of Cape Cod. The force of the explosion will be in excess of 200,000 megatons. That's 10 million Hiroshima bombs. Anything within 1 to 200 miles of the blast zone will burst into flame spontaneously. Fields, forests, houses, even clothing. About six minutes after that, a shock wave will arrive, delivering winds in excess of 350 miles per hour, more powerful than the most potent tornado, causing even more devastation and fanning the flames. But the flames will not burn for long. About 16 minutes after impact, a tsunami wave, having traveled several hundred miles per hour, will arrive at the coastline. Once it arrives, it will slow down, but depending on the depth of the shelf, the wave will be anywhere from 500 to 1,500 feet high. Where the land is flat, the waters will rush inland for at least 100 miles and probably more. New York, Boston, Philadelphia, Atlanta, all will be destroyed. If you have means to get clear of this wave, do so now. However, what comes after that is even worse. The ejector from the explosion will circle the earth and blot out the sun for at least two years, possibly longer. Two years without a summer, two years without a harvest. The famine will be global and devastating, causing more deaths probably than the wave and the explosion combined. Most plant life will be dead in a few weeks. Most animal life in a few months. So that's it. Good luck to us all. Now, as a number of you have probably noticed, that was close to word for word what Morgan Freeman had to say in Deep Impact when he was announcing the imminent destruction of a large portion of the planet anyway to the population of the world. It was indeed a grim moment, but I am not actually duplicating what happened in that movie. I'm not talking about an asteroid that was anywhere near as colossal as what's 
struck the Earth in deep impact. I am instead talking about an asteroid that's a mere one kilometer in diameter, not seven or eight kilometers in diameter. And the difference, although startling, is still enough to cause a massive amount of devastation on our planet and a huge climatological catastrophe. So let's say for a moment that you're an unlucky observer on the coastline watching this thing come in and impact about a hundred miles off the coast of Long Island, let's say. So the force of the explosion is as I described it, and I took sort of a worst case scenario of this one kilometer asteroid, making it a nickel iron asteroid, which is particularly dense, heavy, and therefore devastating. And on top of that, it came in slightly faster than your typical asteroid at about 20 kilometers per second instead of 17, but still well within the realm of possibility. And the reason that I chose a one kilometer asteroid is because in spite of all of our looking, we've estimated that we've only detected about half of these things, which means it could very well happen that next week we could discover one of these asteroids a mere three weeks away from impact and there would be virtually nothing that we could do about it. And as I described before, the effects of the explosion would be utterly disastrous. Virtually all of Long Island would spontaneously combust all the wood, clothing, grass, deciduous trees, everything would become a raging firestorm. And then shortly thereafter, you would have a shock wave with winds over 350 miles per hour, enough to knock down virtually every building on Long Island. And of course, any other coastal communities within about 100 miles or so. And if you get further away, about 200 miles, the damage becomes less severe. Still, you're talking talking about forest combusting and also winds of over 120 miles per hour, but still a lot more survivable. What would happen after that, of course, would be even more devastating. First of all, the crater that an asteroid like this would dig at the bottom of the ocean would be unreal, ending up at 18 kilometers in diameter and over 700 meters deep. That's double the height of the Empire. Fire State Building, a massive crater of that magnitude dug at the bottom of the ocean by an asteroid that would cut right through that water like a hot knife through butter. And then, of course, you would have the tsunami, ranging anywhere from 1,500 feet high for areas that were relatively close to the impact to 200 or so feet high all the way down in Florida, which, given how flat the terrain is in that area, would be utterly devastating. And then you would, of course, have the ejecta, which would be six times worse than the worst volcano in human history that would create a mini ice age that would last for years and blot out the sun for at least a couple of seasons. A couple of seasons without a harvest, a couple of years without a summer. Based on the results of the explosion of the Mount Tambora volcano, back in 1815, the famine would be global and devastating, especially given the fact that that volcanic explosion, the most powerful in human history, was less than 20% as powerful as this explosion would be. What kind of point am I trying to make here? Well, the point is, the DART or double asteroid redirection test that we just carried out, no matter how successful it was, is only only the first step and we're not taking the very important next steps. This was a very good, straightforward idea. Not only crashing a spacecraft into an asteroid at many kilometers per second, and not just any asteroid, but rather an asteroid orbiting another asteroid, which would give us a very good idea of how much we could change the trajectory of an asteroid that might be on a collision course 
course, but the mission also included an Italian CubeSat called Lycia that will give us an opportunity to study both the pre- and post-impact environments on this asteroid to determine composition and other important factors. So this was a very good comprehensive test. However, it is by no means complete. This asteroid was not anywhere near one kilometer in diameter. It also wasn't necessarily typical of all asteroids. Our fictional asteroid was a nickel-iron asteroid that would be much, much more difficult to deflect. Other asteroids, which are little more than clumps of debris that don't have a great deal of surface resistance, might actually be even more difficult to deflect simply because they tend to give way when anything hits them at a rapid speed. It might just simply disperse the object, which would then recoalesce around the same center of gravity. My point is, slamming one spacecraft into one asteroid is not not a comprehensive plan. We also need to carry out a number of other experiments on other types of asteroids, larger asteroids, different classes of asteroids, to determine if kinetic impactors are indeed the best way to deal with this problem. If they are, then great, we need to build more of them and we need to build more of them very fast. And not only build them, we need to deploy them as well. Either have them in a position where they can be rapidly launched on a rocket that is prepped for just such an occasion, or preferably kept in low Earth orbit, or even better, in lunar orbit, perhaps in close proximity with the lunar gateway, where they could react quickly and not have to overcome a great deal of gravity in order to intercept their target. My point is, an effective Earth defense is far, far away from where we are right now. The DART mission, although it accomplished a great deal, and we're going to learn not only a lot about deflecting asteroids, but also about their composition and other factors which are very important scientifically, this isn't nearly enough, and we haven't budgeted for another mission. We've budgeted to detect more asteroids, which is a good step, but it's still not enough. And what I found to be especially perplexing is when Dr. Alina Adams, who's the mission systems engineer for the DART mission, stated that she would be sleeping a lot easier tonight. Why? We had one weapon to use against dangerous asteroids, and we just used it. We don't have another one. We're not building another one. We haven't even budgeted for another one. All of that needs to change, and also we have no evidence to suggest that this is the ultimate weapon to use against incoming objects. We can't say that for certain, and there may be other solutions, such as gravitational tractors, that is to say, satellites large enough to where their own gravitational influence could actually deflect an asteroid, or perhaps a very large solar array, which could serve many purposes, providing power here on Earth, providing propulsion for light sails heading to interstellar destinations, and also deflecting incoming asteroids, and more significantly, incoming comets, where the effect of a high-energy laser causing outgassing on a comet which is mostly comprised of ice and therefore would be significantly affected by this type of weapon could deflect it with a great deal of efficiency. The fact of the matter is there are a lot of different ways that we can still deal with this problem and yes kinetic impactors like the DART mission may be our best solution but they're not going to do us any good whatsoever unless we budget for more of them. And this particular image is always going to be a stark reminder of what is possible. Meteor Crater, Arizona, although not as devastating as the asteroid impact that I described at the beginning of this video, still produced an explosion well in excess of the most powerful nuclear bombs that we have today. It would cause a great deal of regional destruction. And by the way, the asteroid that created this crater was a nickel-iron asteroid less than 
than 50 meters in diameter. Those types of asteroids, we have no idea where the majority of them are. Detecting them is the first step, but deflecting them on short notice may be the second step given how tough they are to find. And again, we have no plan in place to take care of that. None whatsoever. Instead, we had this one experiment which, although effective and although an excellent first step, simply isn't enough and we need to take this a lot further. There needs to be a budget allocated next year for another test for more kinetic impactors if indeed this is the best solution. Something. But right now, all we have budgeted is more detection, which is an important part of asteroid defense, but not a comprehensive defense. And without a comprehensive defense, we are simply asking for a cataclysm unlike anything our species has ever experienced. Once again, to re-emphasize, the type of asteroid that I described at the beginning of this video tends to hit this planet every one to two million years, and as near as we can tell, we are overdue. Please like, please subscribe, check the description for various ways to support my content, and as always, stay angry about space!